Bobby, turn over to Psalms 37, 7, 8, and 9, and we'll get there in just a minute. I'm going to try to get a little personal with y'all this morning and talk about us all in our Bible study class and then really get personal with us when we talk about our subject today from the pulpit. Uh, when I say that, I'm always talking to not just y'all, but I'm talking to myself as well. We're going to be talking this morning about a subject that most all of us, I guess if we would really and truly be truthful, in every aspect of our life, we say that we lack a little bit of it. Everybody got all the patience you need. No, we don't, do we? Well, we're going to be talking about the subject of patience. Before we do that, we're going to have a prayer like we always do. Alan, would you mind to start us off this morning with a prayer? Heavenly Father, we're so very thankful for today. We need to be a lot of blessings of life. Bless us with this day. Heavenly Father, we ask that through our Bible study this morning, that you would clear our hearts and our minds of anything that might be a hindrance to us while we study your work. Help us to pay close attention to the things that are saved. Go with us throughout this service and throughout any part of life that we might have left for the cross and the prayer. Amen. I have figured out one thing before we have our reading this morning that as I grow older, uh, that's a blessing. But I've also figured out that my patience is not near as good as what it ought to be as I grow older. Terry, you got that problem? We all got that problem, don't we? I mean, I think we do. Now, maybe some of you don't. But, I mean, I'm, I'm to the point, you know, I, I get frustrated when things don't happen when it needs to. And then just kind of get, you know, it's just part of life, I guess. But, anyway, I wanted to deal with patience because I think that's something for me, something for you, and for all of us. So let's have our first reading. Okay. Okay. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Boy, there's a lot of things said right here. And about this. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him, and fret not thyself of his in his way. Now, how in the world are we going to wait patiently, you know, for the Lord? You know, no one of us wants to leave before our time, and we will leave in our time. But I think the word patiently and waiting on the Lord is something of grave importance for all of us. I mean, I know the Lord does his thing, and in his time, you know, you ask of the Lord, you pray to God for certain things to happen and certain things to go your way and certain things to come to pass. And, and it don't seem like it gets there quick enough. Anybody have that situation where you really pray for something and you pray hard for it and it just seems like it's getting there when it needs to, but eventually it does. But whenever you think about what Bobby read to us there in the second part of that, he said, cease from anger and forsake wrath and fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Anybody have patience uh, in the way of it being short in your life and it causes you to be a little bit argumentative or wrathful or have a little bit of an anger problem because you're just not hardly as patient as you need to. I've been waiting in line at a food store before and, and get up all upset because what in the world's going on? Been sitting here 10 minutes, you know, and, and you get, you get out of patience, you know, and the same goes true for a lot of things at, at home. You know, anybody that's been married for a long extended period of time, like we have, sometimes you have to really and truly deal with your patience, you know, and after you, <laughs> Margaret's even shaking her head. But, you know, sometimes we get impatient with those that we love and care most in the world, right? And, you know, even sometimes when people are moving a lot slower than they used to, right? And so this is a big deal. I mean, the word patience has a lot of weight in our life. And I, I would be the first to admit that I don't have the patience that I need. I need more of it. And, and I think if all of you would be honest with yourself, maybe, maybe you could use a little more patience in your life. You know, uh, evildoers will be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, 
they shall inherit the earth. I, I, I've often wondered myself about that, Bruce, and I wished I had a good answer for you. But a lot of times when you think about they inheriting the earth, I think it's a place of, of solitude. And I don't know if it's the actual earth in which we live or not. I'll just be honest with you. Yeah, I think, you know, if a person has patience in the way that they should, maybe it represents a place in life where solitude is there and a better, a better situation to live in. I really don't know the answer to that, and I'll be the first to tell you that. I wished I had a good answer for you. Anybody got a thought or a comment on that? <laughs> we do. I, all of us, I, I tell you, it's a, it's a tough situation to be in. But in answer to that question, they shall inherit the earth, maybe it's a place of solitude. That's all I can say. Maybe, it's a, uh, maybe we find ourselves more patient. And, you know, it's hard to find somebody that smiles all the time and don't scowl occasionally, right? And I think that scowl sometimes actually represents maybe a little time in our life when we're not as patient as we ought to be. All right, let's look at Ecclesiastes, the, the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And this will be verse number 8 and 9. These are two verses that we might want to really embark on trying to find a way. Linda, I'm going to get with you way down in the back corner. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8 and 9. We've looked at this in times past. We're going to look at it again. Okay. Better is the end of a thing that is beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Better is the end of anger to be angry. For anger rests in the blossom of foes. Okay, rest us in the bosom of fools. Now look at this for just a minute. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Uh, I think sometimes you've got to tie the word anger with this business of patience. And I, I think that to be something that I really motivated me to want to talk about this subject this morning. Sometimes, you know, we go to the doctor and we sit there and we sit there and we sit there and we wait and we wait and we wait. And we may not feel good. And, you know, when it comes our time, we're just not the person we ought to be sometimes because. A lack of patience sometimes spawns anger. You all agree with that? But notice what he said. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. And I think that to be true. I think sometimes if we could manage a little bit more patience, uh, we could have a better resolve in every situation in our life. Uh, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. You know, I, I think everybody would agree. Sometimes when we're not as patient as we ought to be, we become angry a lot quicker, right? I mean, people, I see people all the time, and, you know, I, I wonder about that sometimes. I've seen people give the children whipping before. when they, If they just thought about it for a little while, the child didn't deserve a whipping. It was just the fact that they ran out of patience and decided that they was going to take it out on the child. I've seen that more than one time in my life. I even almost got in a one time on account of that, a little kid got his hand caught in a door, and uh, the guy that was with him grabbed him up and spanked him real hard, you know, and the kid got his, and I, I got involved in that. And didn't get the police involved, but we got involved. Uh, it's a sad situation when people have no patience whatsoever. And, you know, what about the elderly? Have you ever thought about how that works with as we grow older, you know? We, we yearn for more patience when we grow older for ourselves and, and for other people too. And if we're around people that don't have any patience, they're going to treat you pretty rough. And, and I'm honest with you about it. And that's why we have, we have problems in our nursing facilities. We have problems sometimes in our hospitals. And we have problems because people just don't have the patience that they need. It's just a given that patience is one of those things that if we looked at the Bible, and we're going to look at some things. Let's go to Romans 2, 7 real quick. Romans chapter 2, verse number 7. Gary Bragg, I'm going to come to you on this one. This will be Romans chapter 2 and verse number 7. To them 
do by patience, convenience, and well doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Okay. Patient, continuance, and well doing, seeking for glory, honor, and immortality. Now, I think a lot of times, anybody ever heard the, 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 the term as the patience of Job? Anybody ever heard that before? The patience of Job. You know, so and so's got the patience of Job. Well, I look back on old Job, and when you think about it, old Job had to wonder what was happening to him. You know, there he was. He, he was a man of God, and, and no doubt, you know, the old devil, God said, you can do everything you want to, but you can't kill him. Which brings me to a point, you know, people said, well, the devil doesn't have the power to take your life. Oh, he does. If he hadn't had, God wouldn't have ever said, now you do everything to him, but don't you take his life. And the devil knew not to do that. But now, when you think about old Job, you know, everything he had was taken from him. You know, but he didn't curse God. His wife said, curse God. You know, you, you've reached a point, Job, in your life. All your kids are gone. All your material possessions are gone. Everything's happened to you. Just curse God and die and get it over with. But not old Job. When you think about how that works, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing, I can't imagine what it would have been like to have been in Job's shoes and lost every single thing you had, and, and then someone tell you, curse God and die, and get it over with, you know. It's continuance in well-doing. Seek for glory and honor and immortality. We have, to give, we have to give patience in our life time to deal with all situations, you know. It may not get there as quick as we want it to, but we've got to have patience to know that it will and that it can. Uh, it's kind of like we can all be frustrated if things don't come our way in the time frame that we wanted it to happen. But if we got patience and it does come about, we're a lot better off. I was teaching a class one time, and this guy said to me, he said, you know what a wife's good for? I said, what? He said, a thorn in the flesh. <laughs> Ladies, y'all don't take that literally. <laughs> But in all honesty, and see, Bruce started that. But anyway, let's go on further with Romans 5 and verse number 3. Uh, let's look at this verse and, and see what we can come up. Ike, would you get that for me? Romans 5, 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Okay. He got a little bit of a different translation, but look, at, it says the same thing. Know that tribulation works with patience. And patience, experience, and experience hope. Those things go together. And, and how does that work? I mean, you, you think about this. We glory in tribulation. Now, that's, that's not something that most of us can do, right? But if we glory in tribulation, that means it happened to me, and... I'm not so glad it happened to me, but I got to work through this, and I got to do it with patience. And I will tell you, my patience in life goes back to a time on March 27th of 1994 when I lost every single material possession that Vicki and I ever had in life. We lost everything, including cars and trucks, house, and all the possessions that we ever had. And I thought to myself, there's no way I'll ever come back out of this. But you know, I got 10 times what I had in 1994. Today. And I'm not saying that in a, in a multiple manner. I'm just saying that it took a long time. But patience, notice what it says. Patience, knowing the tribulation work of patience. How does that happen? You know, sometimes if we give ourselves time to come through the, the, the mar in life, the mud in life, the tough times in life, we're far better off in the end than we was when we started. And that's the way patience works in our life. Patience, experience, and experience hope. I think a lot of times, you know, as we grow older, you know, we're hoping for more patience. And we need more patience. You know, because there's all kind of things that experience teaches you as you grow older. You know, you try to teach some of these young people some things and they'll say, I don't know about that. Oh, but I do. I live long enough to understand it. I've lived long enough to experience it, and I've understood it. And so this is how it works. Patience, experience, patience, 
through tribulation. Any thoughts or comments? All right. I hope y'all are getting something out of this this morning. This is a good lesson to think about. Hey, dear. Yes, sir. Uh, the apostles actually loved tribulation because it they felt like it was a badge of honor that what they'd been persecuted for was their love of Christ. And so I, I think they're, he's trying to say this right here, that, uh, yeah, you'll have tribulation, but... Yeah, you will do it, and, and you'll be a better person for it. That's right. And I think sometimes if we would let ourselves really and truly understand that, we'd be much, much stronger in the end. I mean, most of us have been through times in our life whenever we wanted something immediate, and it didn't, didn't happen, and, and it was a little while later that it did happen. And then when it did finally happen and it come to pass, we were so, so much gratitude, so thankful for it. And that's a very good point that he just made about the apostles. Now, look at Romans 8, verse 25. Romans 8, verse 25. This is a good one right here. Uh, Nicole, you, would you manage that one for me? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we will patience wait for it. Now, I think this one to be very prominent in our lives. If we hope for that we see not, then do we, with patience, wait for it. Now, most all of us would agree, we want to go to heaven when this life's over. When, when it comes time and that last breath leaves our body and death comes our way, we want to go to heaven when life comes to the end here on earth. And so he says to us, if we hope for that that we see not, then do we wait patiently for it. And I, I think sometimes... We forget how important that is. You know, um, I've been in life uh, now for a pretty good while, and I think myself, uh, I'm drawing closer to the end. As we grow older, we're drawing closer to the end. And somebody said, well, that's not, that's dismal, that's terrible. But you see, that's not really what it's all about. I mean, patience is, you know, is time, and, and we need that. And we need an understanding with that, with hope that we see not. And we wait patiently for it. So we want to go to heaven. We don't want to go today. Y'all have heard that. But we want to go when the time comes. That's what it's all about. Okay, now let me skip over a couple of them so we can get through this morning uh, on some of the things that we're looking at. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 14. I want to get this one out of the way. It, it's got a lot of reading there, but it's, it's, it's worth something. Brent, you want to pick that one up for me? Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. Mm. Y'all know how hard that is? Be patient toward all men. Y'all know anybody that's kind of hard to be patient with? Uh-huh, most of us do. Well, that thought that he just conveyed to us, exhort you, brethren, you be patient to all men, comfort the feeble-minded. You know, there's, there's a lot of times, you know, I guess it, being around elderly people sometimes will try your patience because, you know, as, as time goes on, the eyesight fails, the ears fail, uh, you know. And, you know, I've known people that didn't want to repeat themselves. Well, what if you can't hear the first time? Don't you need them to repeat it so you can hear it the second time? You know, I'm hard of hearing because I love guns. You know, and I shoot guns, and I'm hard of hearing. And sometimes I say, what? Huh? You know, and some people don't like to repeat themselves. But that's important, to be patient in the fact that some people may not hear as well as they used to. Some people may not see as well as they once did, and some people may not move as quickly as they once did. You only hear what you want to hear. I've heard that more than one time in my life. But be patient toward all men. Now, y'all know what the word all means. That's everybody. Okay, that's everybody. <laughs> Woo. 1 Timothy 6, verse number 11. This here is thrown into a, a, a basket of all kind of good things. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, verse 11, pay them up front. But thou, O man of God, please these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, 
<sighs> now notice, he throws this one in for a lot of things, with a lot of things. He said, you follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, and love. And then he says patience and meekness. So it's thrown into a pile of all kind of good things that we could all be a part of. And, you know, I need more patience, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. I, be, I need more patience. And uh, lo and behold, my little boy, you know, being a physician like he is and, and being involved like he is, he said, Dad, you know, the one thing that you have to learn, he said, in being where I'm at in life, I said, what? He said, a lot of patience. And, you know, I know he's right about that. Because when you think about how important it is, righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and then he says patience and meekness. It's thrown into a pile of good things there. But we got to have patience. We just really got to. Our time's almost uh, gone by, but we need, we need more um, patience. 2 Timothy 2, verse 24. Marilyn, can you manage that? 2 Timothy 2, 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, out to teach patience, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preadventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, now ask this question. Have you ever had somebody try to teach you something and the first time you didn't get it and you had to be taught the second time? Anybody ever had that happen to you? Okay. I once did a class on teaching ladies to shoot a gun. And 25 people showed up, you know, and some of them never fired a gun in their life. And somebody that's been around that stuff all my life, I'm thinking, man, this is crazy. you got to know how to, you got to know which end this bullet comes out of. And some of them didn't. But here's the deal. You've got to have the ability, if you're going to teach somebody something, you've got to have the ability to be patient in teaching. I've had things taught me before, and the first time I wasn't able to do it. The second time I did a little better, and maybe I had to be taught the third time before I really got it down pat. You all agree with that? I mean, sometimes you've got to be just exactly what this is talking about. Be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, and patient. Teaching people to do things sometimes might require us to do it more than one time. You know, we may have to teach somebody more than one time for them to pick it up and know it. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Look at that little aspect of what we talk about here. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. You know, I've often thought I could do something immediately when I saw it done. But when I got there to do it, I couldn't do it exactly the way it needed to be done. And so it takes a little patience on our part, and it takes a little patience on those that are striving to teach somebody to do something. It's kind of like somebody said, well, teach me how to preach. I don't know how to preach. But, you know, if I was going to teach somebody how to preach, I couldn't expect them to be able to do it the first time, you know, to be able to just put it all together and, and, and manage it and, and, and format it and, and, and make it happen, you know. It may take a little time. You know, and we can't be frustrated with the fact that the Bible says, you know, you be meek and apt to teach and patient in that teaching. Okay, we got time for one more this morning. Uh, let me let me just skip over uh, James one verse three. Let's let's end up with this one. James one verse three. This morning on the left hand side. Let's see here who we who we got over there. Michelle, where are you at? All right, James one verse three. Knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Okay. The trying of your faith worketh patience. Now we got to we got to put that in the pipe and smoke it, as a fellow said one time. We got to make sure this goes where it needs to be. Understand, the trying of your faith worketh patience. And, you know, that, that's important for all of us. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And sometimes the trying of our faith, the questioning of our faith, the, the disposition of our faith, it, it needs to be able to work patience in our life. Okay, read, Sarah, 19.
Okay, I think this will be a very important part of what we're talking about this morning. Beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. That's how patience will work with us. And that's part of the, that's part of the fundamental benefits of patience. Whenever you think about swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, that's having patience, you know. Sometimes if we got a quick temper, we could be a lot better off if we used a little more patience. Our temper wouldn't hardly be as quick as what it normally would be if we understood the principle of what the Bible teaches. My time is up this morning on patience, but there, there's a couple of things that 1 Peter 2 and verse 19 and 20 said, For what glory is it if when we be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? When somebody's getting on to you and, and being mean to you, you got to try to be patient with that. You know, so as you don't lose your temper and do something you'd be sorry for later. And I'm serious with you about that. I'm, I'm the world's worst, you know. I punched out my boss one time and got, uh, I was going to get fired. But, you know, it was all because I wasn't patient and I didn't need to be. I, I needed to be more patient, you know, because what he was trying to tell me and what he was trying to show me was, was legitimate. And that, that wasn't good, what I did. And I, I repented of that a lot of times. And, so it's, it's very important for us to understand the principle of what the Bible's teaching is on patience. We've got to be more patient in every aspect of life. I mean, even getting sick and getting well. You know, I, I've been to a point where I kick the wall and scuff around, and I want to get better, you know, but it's going to take time. And, and patience, it, it needs to be in your life so that you can manage a lot better in being a Christian and going to heaven when this life is over. Any thoughts or comments?